gloving up and doing the things that we need to do. I will tell you all right away that you may take a break at any time to go wash your hands. Anyway, that being said, um, we're lucky today to have uh, some folks who can help talk to us a little bit about the challenges that we're facing in the current environment. Um, and I um, am grateful to uh, Carol, Devante, Sydney, and Jason for finding time in their days. I know that all of you are probably very busy trying to be supportive to the small businesses, the large businesses, and everybody who is being challenged by uh, the issues of cash flow and labor concerns and all the things that are associated with this. You know, we're in an interesting position in the Venture Center in that, um, you know, one of the biggest challenges that uh, is occurring right now is the issue as it relates to the PPP and the EDIL loans and so forth. And we have had uh, uh, the pleasure, sort of the blessing and the curse of our relationship with both FIS and the ICBA and a number of folks that have reached out to us to help us uh, help them help have, have, have with, with, with these challenges that they're facing as it relates to some of this technology. But, you know, um, we're, we're trying to be helpful. We've got a great team. And uh, again, we're grateful to the folks who are with us today. This uh, intent is today is to be uh, not about us talking, but about you folks being able to put your hands up and ask some questions and uh, let us rely upon the expertise of our panel today. And uh, hopefully also to be able to contribute in a fashion that talks about maybe some lessons learned, some of the challenges that people are experiencing and perhaps how to overcome some of those issues. So with that, I'm gonna take a step back. I'm gonna hand things off to Ashley. Uh, also wanna say thanks to all of you who participated in the virtual demo day from ICBA. Uh, it was a huge success and certainly demonstrated a pivot for us in terms of uh, producing that program. So thanks to those of you who continue to support what we do. But that being said, let me hand things off to Ashley, who is our Managing Director of Community Programs and leads our efforts uh, in this area. And she will give you a breakdown of kind of the, the rules and the process today and how we can uh, make this the most effective uh, event possible. Thanks very much. Uh, Ashley, off to you. Thanks, Wayne. Um, and thanks again to our four panelists today that'll be uh, answering questions and updating our, our members here on, on some information they need to relay. Uh, we've got Carol Smith with Simmons Bank. We've got Jason Thomas with Frost PLLC, Devonte Jones and Sydney Leisure, both with Wright Lindsay Jennings. And so what we're gonna do to make it as simple as possible, we'll, we'll have Carol Smith go first. She can give us an overview and some updates as far as banking is related. And then once she's uh, finished, you are free to answer or ask questions in the chat box. So you click down there in the chat area and you can pose your question. I'll be sure to uh, get your question answered by Carol. Then we'll move on to Jason. You may ask questions to Jason once he's wrapped up. Same for Devante, same for Sydney. So without further ado, I'll let Carol kick it off and let us know how everything's going in the banking world. Well, hold on a minute. She is uh, having a little technical issue, but I think she's on now. I hear you now. Okay, yeah. Sorry. So, uh, <laughs> So Ashley just introduced you. <laughs> oh, good. Okay. Hi, everybody. I'm Carol Smith. <laughs> if you want to start, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. And everyone else, if you're not speaking, if you can go ahead and mute yourself so we don't have a lot of background noise. Like that. <laughs> I'll go ahead and mute them. I have, I have some power here. Okay, Carol, we're going to go ahead and start with you. If you want to take a few minutes to, to fill folks in on what's going on as far as banking is concerned, and then we'll open up the floor to our attendees for questions in the chat box. Sure. Uh, well, I'll just open it up by saying that I want everyone to know how hard your banks are working. Uh, most of our staff uh, is working seven days a week, about 14 hours a day, to try to accommodate the unbelievable staggering volume of, of applications for the uh, PPP program that are coming in. So we're asking for patience on everyone's end. Uh, the program is a little chaotic. Uh, it came down awfully fast. Uh, the SBA 
opened application periods before they really had all their requirements in place. So we've even as of today still getting new requirements from the SBA. So if you've experienced your bank coming back to you and saying, oh, I didn't get that form. Oh, I need to change this form. It's not your bank's fault. It's the SBA still trying to figure out what it is that they need to, to push these things through. Um, that, the biggest problem we're having on our end is if we are receiving applications that are incomplete. And I, and I will admit that every bank that you're dealing with has a different set of requirements except for the basic application. So it does get confusing. But my recommendation to you, uh, all your businesses, is to go to the bank that you, you normally are doing business with. And if they are participating, then they know you the best and they can advise you the best. If for any reason your bank will not take your application, please feel free to go to another bank that will, and they should be able to accommodate you. But just know that their requirements may actually be a little bit different than the bank that you started with. And that's a frustration for people, but that's just because the system is a little fuzzy. Uh, but we're, we're working hard as we can, and I'll be answer, glad to answer any questions anyone has. All right, we're going to go ahead and open it up for questions. Anybody got banking related questions for Carol Smith right now? And we'll open it up towards the end again. If, if something comes up or a question pops into your head later, we'll have some room at the end also that you can pose questions to the group too. So Carol, you did say that if, if you do have a relationship with a bank that's not Simmons, um, can they potentially come to you later on if they're having issues with their bank? Yes, uh, we do not require you to be a, a, a customer of ours. Um, I, I will admit that we do try to show priority to customers that are ours, uh, just in terms of how fast the order in which things are getting through the system. But uh, it, yes, uh, we will accept applications if you're not a, a Simmons customer, as a lot of banks will. Okay, and Carol, do you know if any um, funds have begun flowing either for the EIDL or the PPP? Are people saying uh, we, we're, we don't, we're not involved in the EIDL. That's a direct loan from SBA, so that doesn't go through the bank, so I can't speak to that. Uh, I know that uh, a number of our lenders at Simmons have had uh, loan documents signed by clients, and I know that a couple of them funded today. Um, so there's not as many fundings as you would think there would be at this stage, but yes, I do know some that have been funded. And then another question, um, about what percentage of applications have been approved? I really don't have that number for you. I know that just in our system alone at Simmons, we've received well over 5,000 applications. Uh, I don't think there's just, there's probably only a handful of those who have made it all the way to approval, and approval meaning they have an SBA number assigned to it and, and they're ready to get loan documents. So I would have to believe that there's percentages very small at this point. Okay, and then we've got another question. Who is responsible for agent fees if an agent can't charge a borrower? So the bank, the bank will get a fee from the SBA and the agent that if there is an agent involved in preparing that package, we need documentation on that from both the applicant and the agent and out of our fees, we will pay the agent and there's a standard uh, schedule of fees based on what the agent can get and we follow that schedule. All right, and then we see, we've got another one. Uh, this question, can I get a home equity loan faster than an SBA loan? I can't get anyone on the phone. Uh, can I go to the branch instead? I, I think getting a home equity loan right now would be probably slower than getting the PPP loan or the EIDL loan for, for a couple of reasons. One is 
uh, all of your bankers are overwhelmed with the PPP program and they're being distracted from their normal business. So they, you might fall down on the priority list, I'm afraid, it's just the reality of it. The second thing is, is to get a home equity loan. You would have to get an appraisal on your house and you'd have to get title insurance. And those are lengthy processes and those would take more time probably than approval on the PPP. Uh, you're welcome to try, but that's just the reality of the situation, I think, right now. Okay, um, here's one. It says, I'm still a bit confused about the PPP and sole propri proprietors and self-employed and how we fall into being approved or applying. So, sole proprietors, self-employed individuals, and 1099 independent contractors. Those three categories were not able to apply until today. And that's an SBA rule. Uh, as of this more, as of actually right now, we, the bank, still do not have the ruling or requirements for those three types of business entities pushed down to us so that we know what those applications need to include. So right now, we're just on hold with those and we can't take any applications until we get the SBA rulings. Okay, and then where do I find the best place for knowing what to prepare to come and see my banker to get uh, one of the EIDL loans? I may not have understood that correctly, but you're, you just are, are answering questions about the PPP, right? That's right, on the EIDL loans, those again, those loans are directly made to the applicant from the SBA. That doesn't go through your bank. So you can go to the SBA website, the Small Business Administration's website, and they'll have a link that will take you to the EIDL loan application process. That's the best way to do that. In terms of the PPP loan, your bank should give you and, and can email you a list of requirements and application forms for that particular, those requirements. So um, if they're not able to get anyone on the phone, should they go to a branch or what, what is their best uh, method after that? It is hard to get people on the phone. <laughs> we, we don't have time to answer phone calls. Uh, a couple of recommendations. Most banks' websites have a link to which you can go to that link it's probably style COVID-19 loans or paycheck protection loans or something like that, that, that you can access either the application process itself or you can access a link where you can, can give them your name, phone number, and email address so that you can be contacted. For instance, Simmons has that both on our 1-800 call center number and on our website. And all of those applications that, that come through those portals are actually coming directly to my office and we vet them and we send out emails with information. If that doesn't work for your bank, then yes, I would go to a branch and I would ask the branch personnel how, they get you, how you get in touch with someone that can help them. Okay, and then there's been a lot of concern about the PPP and the amount of funding that's available. Do you think that more money will be added to that program should the funds run low or run out? It's a very good question. <laughs> I think it's a political question, but um, we, we read what you read, but it's our understanding that they're, they are attempting to pass the next phase of that for another 250 billion or something. And there's there's a little conflict between the Democrats and the Republicans over what should be in that bill. So if you can politic your legislators to pass that thing, yes, there should be some more money coming. We have not heard that the original money has run out yet though. Okay. Um, how will we know when banks will receive guidance for self-employed and SPs? Uh, my credit union is being wishy-washy about taking applications. Yes, we all are. Um, <laughs> so don't blame it on your credit union. Uh, basically, even though the SBA has said that, that April 10th is the day to take those applications, since we have no guidance from them, 
we Simmons Bank are not taking them today either. So my best advice to you is to probably continue to check with your financial institution. I'd wait till probably Monday and go back to them and say, do you have your guidelines now? Uh, that's the only, that's what I'm recommending to everyone that's, that's coming to us that falls into those categories. Perfect. Thank you so much, Carol. I don't see any more questions for now. I'll maybe give it another second. Yeah. Let's see if the wheels are spinning for anybody right now. Carol, thank you so much. I'm, I'm just going to jump in here a little bit, actually. Oh, a wine. <laughs> it's, uh, uh, listen, uh, 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 full transparency, Carol is my banker, and I love her. Thank you so much. <laughs> And I love, I love you and I love the Victor Center. Well, thank you. Uh, no, we, we, we genuinely appreciate that and all the hard work you guys are doing. We know you're burning the candle at, at 100 ends here right you, now. You are welcome. Uh, any any I, I, particular advice or direction beyond the questions that you might want to share with folks? Uh, I know we're, you know, you guys are pretty deep into this trying to manage 20 million loans nationally. So I, I would uh, think anybody that if you've got a little, uh, you know, a little uh, nugget of advice, we'd sure love to have that. I probably have three. One is put on your patient's hat mm. uh, because the system is getting bogged down in three or four areas. One is the banks simply are not staffed well enough to be able to take on just the sheer volume of applicants. Number two is the SBA is not staffed well enough to take on the volume of applicants that are coming at us. And three is we do have to produce all the loan documents and there's a bottleneck there because of just lot, just document production. So uh, don't think that you're being ignored when you haven't heard as quickly as you think. I would recommend if you have any leverage with anybody at your bank that, that in a very nice professional way, the squeaky wheel gets the grease. And uh, if you think you have the leverage to ask them to prioritize your application, I would be using it. And third is, uh, we just know that all of you need help and we take this very seriously. We are as an empathetic and stay awake all night long worrying about you people as you do yourself. Trust me, you have, we have your best interest at heart. So just try to be patient and we're going to get there somehow. We did have another question just come through. You may have answered this, but for any people that have joined within the last few minutes, uh, are banks willing to work with agents on the PPP or does it depend on the bank? Uh, yes. Uh, in fact, we, a lot of the information that we've gotten in terms of just the calculation of the loan itself, the amount and the supporting documentation is coming directly to us from client CPAs. And uh, we've advised our clients when they have a lot of detailed questions about how to calculate the loan amount that they actually use their CPA to do that. And we will take that directly. So yes, we're happy to work with their agents. At least we are, I can't speak for all the banks, but yes, we are. Uh, it, uh, I, there has been a lot of discussion about whether CPAs will actually certify the documents that calculate the loan, and I can tell you they won't because that's a liability on their part. So don't ask them to certify, but they, they will send a cover letter saying, we think this is the best to our ability. No, this is accurate to our best ability. Perfect, Carol. Speaking of CPAs, we also have uh, Jason Thomas on this call, who is with Frost PLLC. Uh, Jason, you want to take it over and maybe respond to some of those points made? Sure, let me unmute. Um, first, thanks for having Frost participate. We know it's a busy time for everybody, including us. Um, I'm going to couple off of some of the things that Carol said. I'm going to start with the PPP, because that's what's on everybody's mind right now. <clears throat> Um, first of all, yeah, the agent question, as we've learned, um, not all banks will participate in the agent uh, process. Uh, some banks don't want to pay that fee. At the same time, there are law firms and accounting firms that don't want to pay, don't want to have that liability. Um, at Frost, we're doing it both ways. Uh, we are acting as an agent for our clients and as well as a consultant. And uh, as Carol said, uh, not only is it tax season for us, but it's been PPP loans 
Texas <laughs> conference. And we have spent a tremendous amount of time the past two weeks, um, our whole team, tackling how do we do, how is the application going to come together? What are the technical issues with respect to um, our clients? Um, and then what's the best way to get this done for them? I'll echo what Carol said, go to your, your lender. It will be an easier process. Um, one thing that we're recommending that our clients do is open a separate bank account if possible for these funds so that um, it's gonna be easier for you to trace. And the key thing about the PPP uh, that you have to remember is if your goal is to get forgiveness, you need to be able to track the funds and show that it was used for the purposes intended. Uh, those purposes that are intended are, are pretty straightforward. Payroll, number one, uh, rent, uh, utilities, and then interest on any loans. And the uh, payroll being the primary goal of, of these loans and why it exists. Um, so if you can use it 100% for payroll, do it. Use your cash flows for other reasons. If you have to peel off some of those funds for other reasons, um, right now guidance, and Carol can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think is around 25% non-payroll for full forgiveness. Now, oh, sorry, go ahead, Carol. Okay. Your funds have to be used for payroll. Okay. So, um, you know, outside of, of that, there are some complex rules that our team has been working through. Um, we do have a dedicated team to um, all the COVID issues. They've been spending a lot of time on PPP right now. So, um, but we've done a great job of parsing through this legislation in a, in a uh, efficient way and finding some, some loopholes. So if you're out there and you think you don't qualify, you very well may. Um, everybody points to the 500 employer or employee rule, which is the, what I would call the safe harbor. There are a lot of exceptions out there that, so you, I had a client this week who we thought had didn't qualify, they thought they didn't qualify, and then we found a, a different way for them to qualify, and they are gonna hit the max on the loans of $10 million. So it's a, a big plus for them. Um, you know, beyond all the other complications that we're all experiencing in our personal and professional lives, we know cash is king right now. And just a couple of the things I wanna bring up before we get into the questions um, about conserving cash, and that you know, one of the questions was, has come up, is there any other way for me to handle this situation? And my clients that have access to other lines of credit, um, you know, somebody had asked about the home equity loan, but if you have other lines of credit, you think you can manage your cash going forward, there are uh, payroll tax credits that are available, depending on how, what's the size of the company, the 100 employee rule applies then. Everybody, regardless of size, can defer their payroll tax payments to the federal government and including self-employed individuals. Uh, if you choose to defer, they go through the end of 2020 and then you have uh, 2021 and 2022 to pay them back. It's 50% at a minimum in 2021 and then the balance in 2022. So those are, are two things that are out there. Um, I mentioned tax season, the federal government has been coming fast and with a lot of changes for us that we're having to adapt to. Um, even last night came out and um, extended the due date for second quarter estimates. So all of your estimates uh, as well as your 2019 payments have been extended to uh, 715. Arkansas, that is not the case. Uh, corporate, the corporate deadline is still 415 in Arkansas and your estimate deadlines have not moved in Arkansas. So uh, there are ways to manage that as well. Uh, so I would contact your CPA or you can reach out to anybody at Frost and we can assist you. So I will um, open this up for questions now. Thanks so much, Jason. We do have a question. Uh, what is the name of the Deferred Payroll Tax Program? Does it have a name? I, if there's a technical name, I don't know, um, but it's, uh, that is, is, it's pretty, pretty straightforward. It's the 6.2% that you would pay in, you have the ability to defer starting, um, I believe the date was March 12th through the end of the year. We have another question. Uh, you mentioned the word estimate. Uh, this person wants to know, does estimate mean 
uh, personal taxes? If you pay in quarterly estimate, estimated taxes, either personally um, through a, a, your corporation or any other sort of entity for the state of Arkansas that is a tax paying entity, uh, th that's what that means. All right, any other questions for Jason? Uh, okay, got another one. If everyone is hoarding cash, how will anyone have money to pay bills? And he mentions that this is a B2B question. Right. Um, you, we, we're hearing a lot, a lot of that from, from our clients uh, between themselves and their customers or, or both ways. I think we're going to run into that. Um, everybody's trying to extend terms to the best they can. Um, even with us, you know, I have clients who have called and said, I can pay you this much now and we'll take it. Um, but I, I, you know, I read an article this morning where, you know, I think we are running into a, uh, we will run into this issue plus the mountain of debt that is piling up, you know, how are, are people going to be spending the money that they've been spending in the past um, and making the purchases they were, purchases they were on a B2B standpoint. I'm muted. This may be a question for Carol. Um, Jason, feel free to answer this as well. Are banks more comfortable with the data they get from CPAs for these applications? I'll speak to that. Um, I do know that internally in our system, if we get an application that has a cover letter from a CPA that says the calculation is done accurately to the best of their knowledge. That's not a certification. It's just a cover letter saying their opinion is that. Uh, that application immediately goes to the top of the pile to be processed. And the reason is, is because our underwriters then do not feel like they have to take the time to check the calculation. Uh, so yes, it does matter if your CPA weighs in on the accuracy. I do know there are a lot of banks that are not checking the calculations as closely as our underwriters seem to be doing. And I would address that if you don't mind. I'd like to address that if you don't mind, because we get a lot of discussion about that just in among the banks. Our, it's our opinion and our stance at Simmons that we want to make sure that that although we don't know what the regulations are going to be specifically when it comes down to forgiveness time, we want to make sure that what we're sending in for you is as accurate as it possibly can be so that there's no possibility that the SBA would find a reason to come back and not forgive the loan. So we're taking a little extra care in how we process our packages than I think some banks that I've heard of. So anyway, back to the question, yes, the SBA cover letter does make a difference. Thanks for addressing that, Carol. Uh, Jason, we do have a couple of other questions. Uh, with all these federal loan programs, does that mean that our taxes are going to go up starting in 2021? It's a great question. I think, uh, as Carol said earlier, uh, with respect to the fu extra funding of the loans, that's a political question. And, and we were facing that uh, even before this crisis. Everybody was looking forward to November to, net to see, you know, where did we think we were gonna head with taxes? Uh, hard to say. I, uh, I would guess that if Trump stays in, in the White House and they hold um, Congress that we won't see a tax increase just due to philosophical reasons. Okay. This uh, person says, I'm an LLC, but I'm the only employee on payroll. I could, for a short period of time, live off of savings, but is there any help available for me to cover business expenses? Outside of um, you know, the ability to defer your taxes that you may owe since you're a pass-through, um, that would be the primary outside of trying to get a loan or apply through the PPP. Um, that would be my thoughts on, on how to support your, your taxes. Um, the SBA has, or the government has funded uh, an SBA program, it's called Main Street, um, to a significant portion. And I see Carol nodding her head. That's just going to be another flood of loans coming through for everybody. And, and I, I can't say, 
you know, I can't imagine how that process is going to go considering that PPP was, was supposed uh, to be an easy process and inject funds into the economy relatively quickly. That hasn't happened, but uh, there are additional government loans coming. Uh, the problem we have is timing. And are they going to be quick enough to take pick up everybody that's already been knocked down at this point in time? Mm -hmm. Another question, how are the CDFIs participating? Don't know if I can, I don't know if I'm familiar with the CDFI. Mm -hmm. is, it, is that a community development fund? I'm seeing a, a nod, yes. Okay. Um, I don't know how community development funds are, are participating, but I can like we can look into it. Yeah, maybe that our attorneys do, maybe later. Yeah, maybe. Mm -hmm. Okay, another question. I'm a small business freelancer and sole proprietor. I don't have a CPA. Is Frost or any other accounting companies offering discounted fees for their service? Uh, discounted fees is, is a, I guess, a relative uh, term. Um, we're like everybody else. We, you know, we're trying to keep our business afloat at this point in time, but we do absolutely help out small businesses and entrepreneurs all the time and work with them on fees up front. Um, and so the expectation is there. And, you know, my, our usual answer, regardless of what size of the client is the more help you give us and the better your records, the lower your fees are going to be. So um, we're more than happy to help out, though, anybody that, that wants to call us, and, and we'll see what we can do. And if we can't help you at a price that makes sense for you, we can absolutely refer you to somebody that we think can. Perfect. Thank you so much, Jason, for taking the time to answer these questions. Again, we will save some time at the end if any more come up. Um, but I do the topic of tax uh, is coming up. So I do want to move on to Sydney Leisure, who is with Wright Lindsay Jennings. Uh, she is a tax law attorney. So Sydney, uh, if you want to fill us in on any new information around that, you can take it away. Um, hi. One thing I want to um, point out is um, Jason mentioned the payroll tax credits, which I think are a great option, um, particularly if you are not taking advantage of the PPP loans. Um, if you are taking advantage of PPP loans, you are not eligible for the credit. Um, and if you're seeking forgiveness with the PPP loans, you cannot um, do the payroll tax deferral. Um, so those are things that are both great options. Um, I think if you can get the PPP and get it forgiven, you know, I mean, that's essentially free money. It works like a grant. That's a great way to go, but if you can't do that, then those payroll um, tax credits or deferral is a great option to look into as well. Um, one thing that we've been getting a lot of questions on is, um, you know, most people who are seeking the PPP loans want those loans forgiven. And so we've been talking with clients to, um, talking through how they can maximize what is forgiven. And the way that the statute is drafted, only the expenses that are incurred and paid in the eight weeks following disbursement of the loan are forgivable. So um, there's a little bit of um, a timing issue there, it, depending on how your payroll cycle works. Um, you know, you probably want to maximize the number of times you have payroll during that eight weeks. Um, banks um, have to disperse the, the funds within 10 days of the loan approval, but there is a 10 day kind of wiggle room period. So you can work with your lender um, if they're willing um, to, to kind of get that to line up with your payroll um, cycle. And we've also encouraged people to, um, if you're renting and you want to use part of this on rent expenses, um, you know, have a conversation with your landlord, see if you can um, maybe even prorate part of your, your payment so that you're paying for what is incurred um, during that eight weeks, you're paying that during the eight weeks so you can maximize those amount that's forgiven. Um, and trying to think of other questions that have been coming up a lot. Um, 
we get a lot of questions about um, the reductions. You know, there are some reductions to forgiveness. If you um, have laid people off or have reduced um, payroll, um, you can um, reduce payroll up to 25% without reducing the forgiveness of your loan. If you've reduced payroll beyond that, you want to get that back up before June 30th. And if you have um, reduced your number of full-time equivalent employees, you want to get that number back up before June 30th. Um, that's going to be a proportional uh, reduction to your forgiveness if you have um, reduced the number of full-time equivalent employees. And we've not gotten any guidance on what full-time means in this situation. Um, but to be conservative, we're um, suggesting that people look at that as like a 30-hour work week on average. Um, but I'm happy to take any questions. Those are just some things that keep coming up, you know, email after email, seeing a lot of the same questions. So I thought I'd address those on the front end. Mm -hmm. Sydney, when you started out, you were talking about how the PP, if you apply for the PPP, it may make you ineligible for other credits. Can you go over that again? I want to make sure people understood that. Yes. So the PPP is a wonderful program. I think it's probably the best right now. Um, if you do have payroll that would, you know, support, um, you know, getting that loan and, and having those expenses, but um, it does affect your ability to, to take some other credits. So if you um, take the PPP loan, you are not eligible for the payroll tax credit um, for a reduction in your gross receipts or if your business has been affected by um, governmental closures. Um, and then if you um, take the PPP and are seeking forgiveness, you cannot use the deferral of payroll tax credits, I mean, of payroll taxes. Um, so that's just something to be aware of. Um, you know, if you're seeking forgiveness, keep paying those payroll taxes um, because that is not going to be something that's um, available to you as a resource if you are getting a forgivable PPP loan. Thanks for going back over that, Sydney. Um, we do have another question that has to do with that as well. How will they be tracking that I'm doing the right thing and able to be forgiven? Uh, what are the reporting requirements? So there is a list of records um, that they've kind of initially put out. Um, I think Jason's suggestion to open a new bank account just for these loans is a, a great way to go. Um, they are going to, um, I mean, it's going to be on the, the borrower to present those records, um, but they are going, the SBA is going to want to see um, the number of employees that you've had historically. There's a couple of different time periods that you can choose um, the, the borrower's choice in that situation, but um, they want to see how many employees you had historically, how many employees you had um, during the, the period that you were using these loans. Um, they want to see a record of any payment that you made for rent, um, mortgage interest, um, utilities, any other interest. Um, interest on loans that is not a mortgage, um, just interest on other debt obligations is not forgivable. Only mortgage interest is forgivable, um, as well as rent, utilities, and payroll. Um, but keep all of those records. Um, and I, I really think that the, having a separate bank account is, is a great way to go with that also. Okay, got another long question. I'm trying to screen these before I send them out so I know what's going on. Uh, Governor Asa Hutchinson has directed the Arkansas Department of Commerce to expedite unemployment benefits to assist our Kansans whose employment status may be impacted by the COVID-19 outbreak. He announced at a press conference on Tuesday, is this really happening? This sounds like a Devontae Jones question. Um, he's also- yeah, this is, I, 
right, Lindsay Jennings. So that might be a good time to, to introduce you. And he's an employment law attorney with Wright Lindsay Jennings. So go ahead and take that one. Hey, everybody. Um, this is Daviante, and I'm on the labor and employment team here at Wright Lindsay and Jennings. Uh, we've been working day and night to <laughs> keep up with all these laws being passed. Uh, I guess the kind of things I wanted to cover, we've been working with a lot of small businesses and the most that's been on everybody's mind is the unemployment that was just mentioned in the, the most recent question. And also the paid sick leave that was uh, granted under the Families First Coronavirus Response Act. Uh, so I guess I'll just go ahead and address the, uh, the first question uh, about the unemployment benefits being expedited. So I was actually uh, listening to the governor's press conference earlier today. And so they've actually started um, distributing these benefits. Uh, if somebody applied last week, they should be receiving them this week. And somebody who's applied this week should be receiving them uh, by the time next week as well. And because, uh, so the unemployment benefits have been extended basically by the federal government as the CARES Act. So somebody who's drawing unemployment will get an extra $600 as well as an extra 13 weeks of benefits. And so that extra $600 should start being distributed by this time um, next week. So anybody who's drawing unemployment will get their state unemployment in addition to the $600 being granted by the federal government under the CARES Act. And so those are the biggest things under the CARES Act, but also people who've not usually been able to get unemployment benefits are now able to. That includes the self-employed, the gig workers, Uber, Lyft drivers, independent contractors. Uh, the bad news on that is they're going to have to actually wait a couple of weeks. On Wednesday at the governor's press conference, it was announced that they're going to have to set up a separate site for the independent contractors and gig workers to and self and self-employed to um, apply for unemployment benefits. They now they will be backdated but they'll still have to wait, I think it's at least three weeks for that site to get set up for them to, have to, for them to be able to apply for benefits and get those. And I, I, wanted, to, I wanted to go ahead and cover uh, the paid sick leave. Uh, I'm not gonna go too deep into it because it's a lot. <laughs> and so I'll just let anybody ask questions if they have any. But basically private employers who have under 500 employees are generally going to be required to uh, give pays, emergency paid sick leave or emergency family and medical leave to employees for COVID-19 related reasons uh, if those employees can are not able to work. And so um, it's up to 80 hours of emergency paid sick leave uh, for um, technically it's six COVID-19 related reasons, um, but really it's five. Um, that's usually if somebody has COVID-19 or experiencing symptoms and they, they're seeking a medical diagnosis or someone who uh, is caring for someone who has COVID-19 or uh, who's been ordered to self-quarantine. And also, if you have, if that employee has a kid who's out of school, uh, which basically everybody in the state is now, uh, if they, and they have no other caregiver there to care for them. Uh, there are a couple of exceptions. Uh, there are the healthcare provide. There's the healthcare provider exception, and also emergency responder exception for uh, to not have to grant these paid leave. Uh, and then there's also a small business exception for companies who are that that may be affected financially by allowing an employee to be out to basically under the child, the child care uh, reason. So if an employee comes to you with the, the saying that they don't have anybody else to take care of their child and they're attempting to get paid sick leave, if you're a small employer with under 50, with 50 or less employees, you may be able to uh, not have to actually get paid leave at that time.
And then there's the emergency family and medical leave, which is specifically, which is more specifically gives 12 weeks to employees for childcare as well. And I, I guess that's all I wanted to cover, so I'll take any questions on that. I don't know, it's kind of a lot, so. <laughs> It is a lot. This is a lot, I think, for everyone, but that's why we're happy to host these and, and answer any questions. I do want to open the group chat for any questions, things that you thought of since this started. Uh, we do have a question for you, uh, Deviante. Are unemployment benefits retroactive? Uh, so, they're, I think they're backdated until the last week of March, I want to say. Uh, so if you if you've been unemployed uh, since then and you go to apply, I think that should be backdated until I want to I want to say March the twenty sixth. Don't take my word on that, uh, but I, they are retroactive to a certain that to a certain extent. And I think that's the last week in March. Okay, we've got a question for either Sydney or Jason or both of them. What about the state's quick action loan guarantee program? Can someone please explain that program? And if I participate, does that mean I can't participate in the PPP? Um, I'm gonna go ahead and jump in on that one. Uh, I can't give you the details on the state quick, act, quick action guarantee uh, loan program. However, we do know that uh, participation in state bridge loans uh, do not disqualify you for the PPP. Good to know. Um, another question, uh, for forgiveness under the PPP, is there any requirement that the employees return to work or only that they keep getting paid uh, this may be useful information for businesses like restaurants, salons, who are under certain operating restrictions. Um, it's fine if they're not actually working as long as they are, you know, an employee of the business and being paid um, as if they are working. Um, pay can be reduced, but not by more than 25%. And to play off that, you know, Sydney brought up a few of the finer details on the uh, payroll credits. Um, regardless of size of the employer, um, if they are paying wages to um, an employee that is not performing any services, they will qualify for the payroll credits. Okay, what if a sole proprietor has a home office with square foot expenses? That's all I was given. I don't know if they want to elaborate are they on that. If, are they asking if that's a qualified expense for uh, the PPP? If they are, I would, I would say no, unless they're going to try to lease, lease that from themselves. And I would think that would be a, a stretch, but Sydney can, can weigh in. Uh, I agree. It's unlikely that you'll be able to get that forgiven. Um, also, any leases, um, any rental payments that you want to get forgiven, the lease has to have been um, in existence before February 15th of this year. So if you were trying to do it now, I don't think it would work. Okay, some employers are requiring staff to use their vacation and PTO days, even if the business is closed. Is that legal? I think that's kind of a no-no. Uh, <laughs> so if the business is closed, you don't have to worry. You don't have to worry about uh, the pay sick leave. At that at that point, if your business is closed and you have employees, I would advise them to uh, suggest unemployment. Uh, I, I think you can give employees the the option to use their a PTO or any paid sick leave that they have, but I don't know that you can require them to. All right, do we have any other questions? You guys have done a great job at answering these. I appreciate that.
Okay, another employment type question. Uh, this person is self-employed with an LLC, but no employees, no payroll other than herself, uh, but work has ceased. Basically similar to freelance or gig worker in some ways, can I file for unemployment? Yes, uh, you can file for unemployment. Um, I think the, the biggest thing though is that three week wait based on the state having to set up that separate site for the self-employed and independent contractors and gig workers to be able to, to get those benefits. Like I said, they'll be backdated, but um, it may take a couple of weeks before you can, before you can apply. Last call for questions. How will the $1,200 check that some will receive affect our taxes? Um, it is structured in the act as an advanced um, credit. So it's a refundable tax credit um, that you know, you're getting paid now instead of getting paid next year with your tax refund. Um, they have said that if um, you know, circumstances change and you wouldn't be eligible for it. I don't think they're going to make you pay it back. Um, that's what I've heard. Jason, have you heard anything different or, or is that your understanding of that as well? Yeah, I haven't heard anything different and that's my understanding. And I would, I would agree with you. I think, you know, again, kind of like with, with the PPP, the, uh, Go, the goal is to get funds back into the economy and, and help people out. So I don't think they're going to be too punitive on, on that. While we wait to see if there's any other questions, I'll leave it open. Uh, Carol kind of left us with some three pieces of advice. Is there anything, Jason, Sydney, Deviante, any pieces of advice before we wrap up that you want to give these folks? I think my piece of advice would be to you know, think through your options and be smart about what you know you're pursuing. Um, again, I think I let off saying this: the uh, the PPP loan is the hot topic right now, but it may not fit your business or your situation um, the best. There may be some other options out there for you to look at, and so um, especially in light of perhaps a shortfall in funding, uh, it's it's best that you you know consult with whoever your advisor is or, or the Venture Center and try to come up with the best options for you and your, your company. I agree with that as well. Um, we have a lot of resources on our website at wlj.com um, that you, you know, can look through to see what's available, what's out there. Um, and if you have any questions, you know, we're here to help or reach out to your attorney or your CPA or your banker. Um, I think everyone right now really wants, we want everyone to get through this. So, um, you know, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. Yeah, I'd like to uh, emphasize that, uh, Sydney, you, you guys, um, one, we, 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 uh, we appreciate you and all you do for the Venture Center, but I must admit that some of the guidance that we've seen, you guys have done a really good job of consolidating that. And we do find it on your website, and I believe it's actually on our website as well. Uh, WSJ has done a, a really good job of uh, just, just distilling this information, I think, for small businesses and businesses in general to uh, very easy to digest and understand composition. So we're grateful to you for that. I also just want to make one other comment today. It's good to see our former mayor with us today. Mark, nice to see you. Appreciate you probably doing a little extra work too these days, huh? Okay, we do have another question. It looks like a, around employment, unemployment. Is there a website where I can get the documentation that we might need to apply for unemployment while we wait for these three weeks? Uh, you can uh, you can always visit the Arkansas Division of Workforce Services website um, and check out what you need there. Uh, uh, they should they they have some 
Q and A's for employees and and employers that you can check out. I don't. They they were issued a couple of weeks ago, so they may not be as up to date. Um, like Sydney said, you can always check out uh, wlj.com. We have a COVID nineteen resources page, and I, I th but I do think the best place to go would be just straight to the Division of Workforce Services website, and you should be able to get all the information you need from there as far as when it comes to unemployment. And I also just want to piggyback on what uh, everybody's been saying. A lot of a lot of these laws have been issued. It's a it's a lot. They're they're kind of convoluted, and every, almost every day some new guidance is coming out. So uh, as far as the employment related stuff, check the deal the Department of Labor's the Federal Department of Labor's website early and often. Uh, you can if you have a Twitter account, follow them on Twitter. Uh, follow Secretary uh, Scalia on Twitter as well. They they're uh, tweeting out links to guidance almost daily, like I said. So just check back early and often, and also the WOJ website as well. We try to keep everything as updated as we can, as fast as we can. So um, I I would just say, just keep your eyes open. There's guidance coming out every day. Uh, Wayne, uh, I, I might mention to everybody that's on uh, uh, this uh, Zoom that. Um, the Kauffman Foundation on Entrepreneurship, uh, their website, they have some excellent, excellent resources there uh, on relief funds and uh, uh, some guidance on a variety of different things. And so people might. I need to get, your, I need to get something out of my, that tin bag. <laughs> Sounds like we have a uh, future entrepreneur on the line there. That's good. Uh, be, not, not, not only you, Mark, but someone else. That, no, that, thank, thank you for that. And, and we appreciate the Kauffman Foundation and what they do. Uh, as you know, I'm, I'm, I'm an advisor to them and, and, and they've been a great supporter of, of the Venture Center as well. So, and I know you work closely with them. That's great to know. There are, you know, just a ton of resources out there to give guidance. Um, but I also think too, we're really trying to understand, uh, I think from a lot of folks, which has made this so valuable today is uh, what are the pitfalls? And uh, it's difficult when we work in a world that is literally, uh, as fluid as this with guidance changing virtually daily as uh, Devante and others have mentioned here. I do have one last question and, and uh, Sydney, this may be best directed to you or maybe at Devante. There is a, uh, there was a payroll tax holiday that was recommended or suggested. Is that, is that guidance still in place? And how do you feel about that? I, I have, uh, I, I, I think that that's a slippery slope, but that's just an opinion. I don't know. Maybe, uh, maybe Jason has an opinion about that as well. I um I have not heard about this holiday, um. So if Davante or Jason knows more about this, I'll defer to them. I, I think what we know is what Wayne knows is that it, it was uh, it has been brought up as one of the many stimulus measures that uh, could be put into place. Uh, what do I think about it? You know, uh, frankly, on top of all the other programs that we have and uh, that we're putting in place, it's just going to add, add to it. Um, I, I personally think that we are um, only at the, the tip of what the government's going to be putting into the, the economy and the stimulus, stimulus program. Um, I, I don't see eight weeks as being a, a sustainable amount for a lot of small businesses. And, and especially if there's a delay, we're going to continue to have uh, continued ripple effects throughout the economy. Um, that are going to go well beyond this this time. I see that Mimi has put up our website uh, as well for everybody. It's frostplc.com. Um, our team has done an outstanding job of putting out information on the website, on social media, and all of our clients. So if you want uh, to get on our distribution list, uh, please reach out to us and we'll, we'll take care of you. Thanks, Jason. Yes, uh, Mimi with our team and also Ricky with the Wright Lindsay Jennings team has also put up some information and resource to look into. Looks like there's some information on grants, if that's something that's of interest to you, um, as well as what the Wright Lindsay Jennings folks, they've got a, another resource available on their website and contact information for that. 
I want to give a virtual round of applause to all of our panelists today. You've done a wonderful job in answering these questions and, and relaying the information. Uh, again, thanks so much to Carol Smith with Simmons Bank, Jason Thomas with Frost PLLC, Sydney Leisure uh, with Wright Lindsay Jennings, as well as uh, Daviante Jones uh, with Wright Lindsay Jennings. Thanks uh, you all again so much. If you'd like us to do these again and you find these useful, I would love you guys to put in the chat box what you want to hear about next week. Again, like was mentioned, this whole environment is rapidly changing. What you hear today might change Monday, Tuesday. So we're hoping at the end of the week we can combine all this information. So anything you're interested in learning about, please drop that in the group chat box. Pay attention to those websites and, and information that's being updated. Um, if there's no other question, thank you so much for joining us today. Have a great rest of your Friday. Have a great weekend, and we hope to see you again soon. Bye. Thank you all. Not sure if I should kick these people out or should we end it and jump back on? I think we can remove. Oh, they're self removing. You have the power, Ashley. I've got the power. Don't sing, Ashley. No, I shouldn't. I really shouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty good, though, Ashley. Mm hmm. Are we still recording? Can we stop that? Hold on. Oh, we got actually singing recorded. Excellent. Oh, perfect. Oh, <laughs> uh, there it is. We're still recording. Mm.